Hello guys, today we're going to be doing a simple timer using React.js. Okay, so we have to do a simple counter with React. I think it needs to look like this. So our challenge is to do first do the HTML of this and then update the DOM or the component, the React component on every second with whatever we need to. So to start, and well, it also says as additional requirements that the component doesn't is not supposed to receive any properties. The component must store its local state in the local store state how many seconds have passed and the clock icon on the left of the component you can find it on font awesome it's referring to this icon this clock okay so let's start by uh, starting a new project like always for that we have to get inside our folder I'm gonna get back to because I have several projects here but it doesn't really matter I'm in workspace right now let me get inside projects then I'm gonna make a new directory saying simple counter then I'm gonna get inside of it and here I will find in the github repository the, the name of the and I think it's let me see mvm is 8 I'm just uh, upgrading to mvm 8 to node 8 because it's the minimum requirement to use the breath code CLI. Breath code start React. So this command it's to start a new project in React. It will create a lot of folders inside of ours. You will see here that it's doing a lot of things. It's basically creating a an entire system of folders so that we could start working right away because uh, doing configuration it can be can be very complicated sometimes now what do you have to do is npm run c9 and we'll see how it doesn't work <laughs> I think we're missing ah we are missing npm install that's the last one this is gonna take a while so I'm just gonna pause okay it's finished now um, if you're working, if you're not working on Cloud9, because I'm gonna do npm run c9, because I'm working on Cloud9 and it's made for it, this command, it will run my development server that is gonna do hot deploy, so I'm gonna be able to see live all the changes that I make. If you are not using c9, you have to do npm run, I think it's dev server, like this, and it's gonna run it. But I think in Cloud9, it's better to use it with C9 because it also chooses the ports that we're going to be using. Because in Cloud9, only certain ports are allowed. But it's cool because I, I'm able to edit on... I'm able to edit on the cloud, so I don't need to install any, any software. So basically, we our project is running. You can go to your local host, and you would probably see it running. If I don't see it running, it's because probably I have to use the Cloud9. The Cloud9 uh, command. Here it is. You will see the baby of Rigoberto. And now, this is a boilerplate, right? So all of this is just to show you that Bootstrap is installed and everything. But we should get to work because we don't need any of this. We need to do our counter. So to start, everything always starts on the index. The index is importing React and React DOM. Then we're importing Bootstrap. Then we're importing our own styles, our own style sheet. And finally, we're importing our first component that it's home in this case. So let's open home. And for us, home, we don't need home anymore. We don't need, we don't need home. So let's just delete home. And here we'll do the component. So basically what we need to do is something like this. I'm going to start by um, 
creating a, a component, so function, you can call it counter, or simple counter. You can have components as functions, as functions or as classes. In this particular case, I'm going to create it as a function, so I have to return the HTML. I'm going to start by returning hello world, like always. Hello world. The property, the parameter that it receives always is props. Let me put this in parentheses so Cloud9 doesn't think it's an error. And then I can say here simple counter. It's still in yellow. I have an error here, simple counter. Could be the error. Ah, the p tag has to close, so I didn't close it. Cool. Now I save, and instead of seeing Rigoberto, we should see Hello World. And there it is. Okay. Now the next step will be to start doing our HTML. So I'm going to change this to div. I'm going to remove the Hello World. Let's say that for us, it's going to have our styles. I'm going to do for each box here. I'm going to do a different div. And then for the entire, the big thing, we're going to do another div. So the big thing is this one. Let's call it, let's assign a class big counter. And then for the small ones, we can call them, well, it depends on each of them, right? So the first one I'm going to call, on the right, I'm going to call seconds. So class name, seconds. Then this one will be seconds. or digit maybe, one digit, two digit, three digit, and then I think it's uh, like four, we don't, and then finally the, the actual calendar, so let's call it calendar. Let me look for the calendar in front. Awesome. So font awesome icons. And then here I guess I have to put like a clock. Here it, here it is. Ah, but this one is not the free version, I think. Let me see if it says yeah, apparently both are free. So I'm just gonna copy the icon and put it here the first position and then I'll have to import the icons so, so to import icons oh, this has to be a class name to import icons we have this template I think in uh, in flux no I know I have it somewhere I think template oh yeah we can get it from from this project source js utils icons yeah you need five steps to import off an awesome icon I'm just gonna paste this here the this uh, file here I'm gonna call it icons.js and inside of it, I'll paste all of this. The first thing will be to import the Font Awesome library. If you haven't installed it, you'll have to do something like npm install Font Awesome, Fort Awesome. The second one will be to import the actual uh, icon that you want. In our case, we want F FA clock. So let's call it FA clock. 
And also you have to check when you copy the, the, the eye contact, it says F-A-R. So the last letter is important because it says that it's not S, it's not solid here. It's a different one. So the R stands for something else that I don't remember. Let me here put the actual icon. Here we can also put FA clock. Yeah, so it's not solid. I think it's regular. Yeah, it's regular. You can see here in the URL in the top. So I think I have to say here regular. So let me put them all together so you can see them. So the first thing will be to actually import from Awesome. You only have to do this once. Then for each icon that you want to add into your project, you have to say the name of the icon. Then import. Uh, I'm, I want to use uh, SVG on, on the. I want Webpack to. No Webpack. From Awesome to use my icons as SVGs because they they perform better in the in the website. So that this configuration is for that. And then lastly. I'm gonna add them into the phone awesome library, the FA clock. If you have more icons, you can put them separated by a comma, or you can run this several times, this line of code. Okay, so now I'll save it and it should work. Let's see. I should see something. Let me see if they have an error. Everything seems okay. Let me see if I say something here like zero, 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 and the clock. What happens? The bundling is okay, and it, those are the zeros, but I don't see the phone awesome icon. So let's see what's happening. There's the calendar, and there's the icon. Ah, because I didn't import icons into my uh, index, so I. Lastly, you have to say import icons.js. So it's part of your bundle now. Oh well, it has to be a relative path because it's not a, it's not in the node models folder. And if I don't put the backslash at the beginning, it's gonna think it's in the node models folder. So now there's the clock. You see it? The little clock. Okay. Now let's make them to the right. So they display in, in a line. So for that, I'm gonna say the counter. Any div that is a child of the counter, it's gonna be always display inline block, and it's gonna have a width of. Oh, well, let's say that it's gonna have font size of. I don't know, like 30 pixels maybe. Maybe that's too much. Let's say 20 pixels. And then it's gonna have a line height because we want it to be centered. So the line height has to be the same as the height. And the height, it's gonna be also 20 pixels. Let's see what we're doing here. Let's wait for it. There you go. Now I'm gonna make it with a background color background exactly the same color as the example so I just need to use the color picker from Apple Windows has a bunch of good color pickers too I'll just copy this color and then I'll put it here and let's see what happens there they are now the code in white color white and finally I'll put I don't know if it's finally but we're close to finishing the padding it's I don't know 10 pixels so they have like a let me just remove the height and see what happens okay it's center that's cool let's make the font even bigger let's make it 60 pixels and see what happens okay if the if this one's 60 the other one needs to be 62 okay we have something now we can to big counter 
we can apply also an inline block display inline block and then we can center it by saying a margin auto let me see what happens yeah nothing changed so I guess I have to also set a width to it well let's do a text align text align center let's see what's happening here the big counter margin auto maybe we have to put a width so the margin auto works uh -huh. so it seems that it, the width needs to be probably the entire thing yeah so with text align center was enough so margin item in name block which is not edited yeah if we, if we want to keep making it better this is not about this exercise not about um, CSS and HTML so I'm just gonna leave it like this I'll just apply a little margin because we, w we should focus on on the react part that is what we want okay I have four digits now I have to set I'm gonna convert this into into a class so we could use the state now let me try to do it first as as a uh, function yeah and then we can change to a state so the function was simple counter I will need to pass since the only way to pass stuff to it is through the props because it's a, it's a functional component it's a component as a function we will have to actually have here as properties we can say here uh, like digit one or let's say yeah digit one is okay this one will be digit two digit three so digit two digit three and this one will be digit four okay then here we will have to actually pass those digits right so what we're gonna be doing now it's actually calculating that I'm gonna first I'm gonna set an interval the set interval function calls a function every few seconds or every few milliseconds so I'm just saying I want to call this function every second let me see every every 1000 seconds so every 1000 seconds I'll render simple counter again but I'll pass different digits to it let me initialize the counter here I'm gonna say counter equal to zero and then here as digit one I'll pass counter but I need to only pass the first digit of counter so for that what we could do is say dot index of and then depending on how big counter is I will have to know how many digits counter has I can retrieve the first or the last um, character in counter that's one thing. Another thing would be because we know it's four digits always. So if I divide this between uh, ten, it will the comma will be what's after it. So I can say, uh, for example, let's say that um, my counter is five 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 zero. So if I divide divide five 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 with the calculator. If I divide 
five 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 by zero it give me a reminder of it gives me the other three so I guess by saying by saying let four four it's equal it can be a const const four it's equal to math dot floor counter divided by four digits and we can do the same for for the others like three two and one so this one will be time divided by 100 this one by 10 and this one by one yeah actually is one more always so we can have a comma like a decimal and then we'll not ignore let's see let's see what we have here I'm just gonna console.log console.log everything so I understand what's happening here and what numbers do I have four three two and one let me take this out first because I don't want to focus on that and let me see the console it says it's missing the props validation yeah let me also do the, the props validation that's because we're using the prop types uh, library so you wanna always validate with prop types like how it's saying here let, let me show you if you go to the prop types npm repository you will you can copy from here how the validations sh should be done all you have to do is put something below the component saying the name of the component dot prop types as an object and then you have to specify all the properties that the component is going to have and what data type they have so it's going to have the 4 the 3 the 2 and the one and this is all going to be number and we have to import prop types import prop types from prop types let's see if now it, it works yeah like now we have a on the 30th we have a missing semicolon and that's it well we don't need this comma here it's just a warning but we can already check what we have it's always zero so it's not we forgot to increment it so let's do it let's increment it counter plus plus so it turns out that I had it right it's a math of floor but instead of 10, 1, instead of 10, 100, uh, instead of 10, 100, 1,000, and 10,000, it should be 1, 100, 1, 10, 100, and 1,000. If I refresh, you will see here that at the beginning, it's a 0, 0, 0, then 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. So basically, I have, and we, when we get to, 10 we have one here and we have also the second digit of this guy will be our what we want so for now I'm gonna just pass it to simple counter as digit one will be will be one then Two will be mm, 
digit 2, I, I have to put it also inside the, the timer. 3 will be 3 and 4 will be 4. So digit 2 here, digit 3 here, and digit 4 here. Let's see what we have here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, boom. Yeah, so you're probably wondering what's going to happen with the number 1 here. And I have no idea. Let me just figure it out. Hmm. I think that's also going to happen with the other ones. So since I only care about one digit, I guess I can... I can ignore the second one. Maybe we can do like the same with it, with the other ones. Here we can say that we only want the first digit. So it turns out that to retrieve the last number of a, uh, the last digit of a number, all you have to do is get the the model of it, like by 10, say in a percentage 10, we can get the last number like this, and that will give us the last number, so I'm just gonna refresh this, and you'll see how it should be, so 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then it works. So now we're doing it on every refresh. And that's it, that's the project.